Today I'd like to discuss the findings from an MS research review where they were looking at probiotic therapy for treating multiple sclerosis. And there are a variety of studies that show that taking a supplement, a probiotic supplement, can really help MS patients by slowing down the progression of multiple sclerosis, also improving mental health, decreasing depression, improving cognitive function and motor function, and just a general improvement in health for MS patients. So what I'd like to do is discuss the results of this review and really explore the uses of probiotics to help people that suffer from multiple sclerosis. And if you follow my work, you're also aware that I've done a live event and talked regularly about this gut-brain access. And the gut-brain access is really a two-way communication between our central nervous system, our brain, and our intestines, the gut. And this also impacts our immune function and our endocrine system also, not just the central nervous system. So again, this is a two-way communication network between our brain and our gut. And we know through science that there are so many different ways that the microbes that live in our gut really impact our mood, our mental health, mood regulation, motor function. So this again is involved with the gut brain access. And people that suffer from multiple sclerosis, they have changes in this gut brain access. And they really, the scientists really believe that this is a big cause of multiple sclerosis. And also, it really impacts how quickly the disease, the MS, will progress in MS patients. And research shows that supplementing with probiotic bacteria can improve our cognitive function, our motor function, and our mental health by modulating this gut-brain access. So we're gonna talk a lot about immune modulation, and so it's helping to modulate the pathways that are in the gut-brain access. MS patients are more likely to have different microbes, especially in their digestive tract, than healthy people. And I've shared that again on different live events. So I'm giving you a little bit of background before we really talk about how probiotics have been shown to be helpful in multiple sclerosis. So again, we know like we, we need a starting point. We know with multiple sclerosis, we have dysbiosis. We have too many disease causing microbes. We know that these different microbes can really impact the communication between our gut and our brain. And what's so fascinating is that we carry at least a hundred trillion microbes in our body at any one time. And these cells, they, out, they outnumber, the microbes outnumber are the cells of our body by 10 to one. So we're literally like a home for trillions and trillions of different types of bacteria and other microbes. And probiotics, if you don't know what they are, they are a supplement that you can purchase online, you can purchase in a health food store. And when you take them orally, what they're doing is in the capsule or if it's powder form, they contain health promoting bacteria, usually just bacteria but there could be some other species in there also. And so what it's doing is when we're taking the supplement, we're hoping to bring back or reintroduce more health promoting microbes. And that again is supposed to help our health. And we're gonna talk about what the studies have found. So there are so many different jobs that our health promoting microbes will do in our body. Number one, they act as our natural defense. They crowd out the parasites. They produce or they help us to digest our food and they actually produce vitamins for us. They help us to absorb our nutrition. They modulate our immune system. They're involved in cell to cell communication. They impact which genes are turned on and turned off. And what's crazy is they affect brain development and function including regulating nerve impulses and the creation of new nerves and myelination. So the microbes that live in our body, in our intestines especially, they are important in brain development. So understanding how the health promoting microbes help us in sickness and health or affect us in sickness and health is the most heavily researched topic in science today. 
health promoting microbes in our digestive tract, they really improve our overall mental health and also the neurological functions. So mood, anxiety, attention, memory, and cognition. And there is growing evidence that the metabolites or the poisons that they produce, especially certain bacteria, can be really, really awful, toxic. And they play a crucial role in our mental state and the regulation of our immune system. It is well known in science that the gut microbes have a significant impact on the central nervous system in, in being in a healthy state or disease state. And it's now believed that microbes that live in the gut can affect development and again, the function of the central nervous system. So the microbes that live in our body, they impact us in ways we just don't even understand. And so it's very important that we assess where our microbes are at, how out of balance we are, and then we also have to definitely correct it. And that is the key. That's the missing piece of the puzzle to recovering from chronic disease. Health promoting microbes in the gut can directly change. Uh, one, one thing that they found is they can change the biochemistry in the central nervous system by affecting this certain type of molecule and it's called BDNF and it is health promoting. And there's increasing evidence that shows that this two way gut brain interactions between the immune system and the gut microbes are really important for how severe the multiple sclerosis is going to be. So if we have a greatly impacted gut brain access, then we could have a more severe case of MS. We could have the progression happening more quickly. And these are some hallmarks of, or characteristics of multiple sclerosis. So I'm not gonna talk about the, the physical, like as far as, you know, a paralysis and numbness and balance. We're talking about physiological hallmark signs. So again, changes in the gut microbes. The microbes that live in the intestines of MS patients are very different than the ones that live in healthy patients. We have gut dysbiosis. We have leaky gut. We also have leaky brain. So these parasites and the poisons they produce, they compromise the intestinal lining. So then we have a breakdown of the intestinal lining and then things that are in our intestines will move into our blood. So that's called leaky gut that shouldn't go there and that'll cause an immune reaction. But we also have leaky brain. So things that are in our bloodstream that should not go into the central nervous system will because of the compromised blood brain barrier. We also have demyelination. We also have loss of cells that maintain the myelin sheath around the nerves. We also have activation of immune cells in the central nervous system. And I've done lots of talks on that. It's like, why do we have more immune cells? Our soldiers that protect us from parasites, why are they activated in the central nervous system? I wonder if we have infection there. I wonder if we have parasites there. And of course the answer is yes. And then also we see with multiple sclerosis, uh, a huge increase in a certain type of cell that really supports the neurons in our central nervous system. One thing that I found really interesting, again, just more evidence is that when we're treating parasites, we like to use oxidative therapies. We use parasite drugs, we use antimicrobial herbs, we also like to use oxidative therapies. And what they found in research is that they're finding, I should, uh, let me backtrack, the body also uses oxidative uh, types of uh, therapies. In, it's not a therapy, but it's using oxygen to treat parasites also. It's part of the natural defense of our immune system, and we call them reactive oxygen species, ROS. And with multiple sclerosis, they find that they ha we have increased concentrations of reactive oxygen species in our spinal fluid, and that's in MS patients. So again, if our body creates these reactive oxygen species to fight infection, and we have more of this in our central nervous system, when we have MS, especially in our spinal fluid, that's another indication that MS is an infectious disease. Our body is fighting infection. That is the purpose of the ROS, the reactive oxygen species. So what I wanted to just quickly share with you right now is some of the studies, like uh, it'll be like one or two sentences 
conclusions that these studies have found, does probiotic therapy help MS patients? So one study, they looked at, um, they gave their patients or they gave the participants in the study, they gave them one specific probiotic. So I'm not recommending any probiotics. This was just the study. It was VSL number three. So VSL, that company, they have different strengths of their probiotics. I think one of them is around 120 some billion and then 450 billion and 900 billion is their most concentrated. That probiotic is used a lot for people that have inflammatory bowel disease. And it doesn't cure them, but it gives them a little bit of symptom improvement while they're taking it, but it doesn't last. Same thing happened with MS patients is when they took it, they noticed a little bit of immune modulation, so less inflammation, especially they call it in the peripheral innate immune response. So that is the innate immune response is like our, our it's the part of our immune system, it's the first responders. It's part of the immune system. It's like as soon as there's infection, the innate immune response is activated. So they found that when they took this VSL number three, that the MS patients had less inflammation, not in the central nervous system, but throughout the rest of the body. And part of the immune system is the innate, and that was more modulated. But if they didn't keep taking this probiotic, they did not have lasting results. And then another study found that probiotics may improve uh, improved disability and mental health symptoms by, again, in improving immune modulation and enhancing serotonin in the brain. Another study where they gave MS patients 12 weeks of probiotics, and they found improvements in different types of surveys. So one of the surveys, the EDSS, many of you have probably done that, and there they found improvements in mental health and also another survey looking at depression, they found improvements in depression. Another survey looking at pain and they noticed improvements in pain. And again, another one looking at depression and anxiety. So they found quality of life and again, mood improvements, less, a little less pain. But again, I don't know how significant the improvements were. But you know, we'll take any improvements we can, right? If it's not harmful, if it's helpful, that's all good. We're moving in the right direction. Probiotic consumption showed a significant influence on sanity health. So that was another study. Another study, supplementation with probiotics reduced the fatigue in a certain, um, again, another survey. And probiotic supplement also improved immune modulation and improved oxidative stress markers. So if the stress, the oxidative markers are going down, that means the body is not fighting infection as much. And the studies also supported that when you take a probiotic, you have MS or any other condition, it definitely impacts gene expression. And finally, another study showed decreased serum insulin and again, decreased inflammatory markers by taking a probiotic when people had multiple sclerosis. So all in all, we see a lot of immune modulation, which is a good thing. A little bit of symptoms of or less symptoms of pain and maybe a little less progression of disability, definitely improvements in cognitive function and mood, a little bit of motor functioning improvements. All of those things are really good. The types of microbes that I've seen in these studies, a lot of lactobacillus, and also bifidobacterium species. So for example, lactobacillus acidophilus. These are things you can see on the back of the supplement bottles, like when you're reading the ingredients, lactobacillus or just L, they'll do L and then um, abbreviated uh, casey, and then bifidobacterium bifidum and L uh, lactobacillus fermentum. I've tried a lot of different supplements, probiotic supplements in the past, and I haven't found them to be extremely helpful, probably because of all the other things that I've done. So I've tried Dr. O'Hara, I've tried different Garden of Life ones. They have higher strains, less strains. They have the soil microorganisms. I've tried these different spore probiotics like Megaspore, and there were a few, Sintol and Symbion. I've also tried ones that have Saccharomyces boulardii or Bacillus subtilis, which are different microbes that will actually go after Candida. So you'll find many, many different ones in the health food store. 
my advice would be just be really careful with prebiotics because what we have found is that the prebiotics in theory should be a good thing. They will be food for the health promoting microbes in the supplement, but they will also feed the parasites that are making us sick so they can actually make your symptoms worse. That's why we always avoid prebiotics. Our students always avoid prebiotics. And it's very important also not to have a probiotic that has dairy or wheat or any of those allergens, soya, et cetera. Uh, what we have found to be the most helpful is homemade raw sauerkraut. If you, if you can't make it yourself, you can usually buy sauerkraut in health food stores or in grocery stores. It should be refrigerated or else it's not going to contain the health promoting microbes. If it's just on the shelf, then it's been pasteurized, it's been cooked, and all the good guys are dead. So if you find it in the refrigerated section of the health food store, you'll see that um, it's great, but it's still not going to be as good as homemade. Unless there's somebody locally, like at a farmer's market in your area, that does a, it's called a wild ferment. Of, so basically what they do is they're not adding a culture. They're not adding, like you could take a probiotic pill and add that to your cabbage that's all shredded in your vegetables and that will take over. So those three or five strains will take over. Where you do a wild ferment is you're taking the vegetables, organic vegetables that haven't been sprayed, and you are cutting them up and you're allowing them to ferment, which means that they're multiplying. They're eating the carbohydrates in the vegetables. And because it's naturally, it, it grew outside, there's gonna be many, many types of health promoting microbes. On, those, on the cabbage and those vegetables. So that is truly the most health promoting because we do want diversity. We do want to have many different types of species of health promoting microbes because that really helps to protect us from all kinds of different parasites. So we have found that to be the best and homemade sauerkraut is so incredibly delicious. It's, it's way nicer than even the, the store-bought. So taking the right probiotic, could potentially help you to have some symptom improvements. But what is your goal? Is your goal to recover from chronic disease or just to try to manage the symptoms? So if your goal is to recover, then you have to treat the parasites that are making you sick. And that's how I have recovered and that's how many of the wellness champions have recovered. If you haven't heard any of their successes yet, go to Live Disease Free on YouTube or on our website. You'll hear lots of amazing stories. Grab some Kleenex because it'll make you cry because they're so beautiful. And if that's what you want, and if it makes sense to you, then watch my masterclass training. And that way you will understand a lot more about the steps we take to recover. We have to treat the parasites, but we have to also support the body before we start to treat so that we will have the greatest success as soon as possible, right? We want to treat as soon as possible. We want to tolerate the treatments. We want to recover as quickly as possible. And that's what we do in the Live Disease Free Plan. If you're new to all of this, watch my videos. There's playlists on YouTube, Live Disease Free. Learn about the infections. Start to change your diet. Start to see massive improvements in your health. Take a probiotic. Without prebiotics, fine, absolutely. Without dairy, etc. But just make sure that you understand that they're only gonna help a little bit and in order to recover, you have to treat the parasites. And that's what we do in the Live Disease Free Plan. And when you are at the place where you're ready to start treating, if you'd like some support, make sure to watch my masterclass training. You'll find a link in the description of this video. And please help us get the word out. If you found this training to be helpful, please share it with others. We've gotta get the discussion going on treating these parasites. Share it with your practitioner, share it with your chiropractor, your neurologist, your doctor, etc., MS groups. We have to get the discussion on treating the cause of MS. It's time. Take care and bye-bye for now.